ایجاد رویت با به ایدا ایسوزا با هرنگیتی خانده بیم و بیمی خودون در این تیزی He 
his chair. He will pretend as if it is a mistake. He will touch the woman in the court now. For a distant one, that one will say, Are you mad? I will slap your face. Then say, ah, This one is a decent woman in the court. The master said, He should put the chair. And touching the love of whether the woman in the court or the sister in the death, first time, second time, third time, and she doesn't talk, you will know that this one is not the type that you will respect. And the master will even say, Here is your house. Give me your address. Give me your phone number. And that will be the beginning of the discussion. Sister, is that not a shame? Ask yourself, behind my hijab, behind my, behind, my behind my pay, am I representing Islam? In a situation where you don't respect her, represent Islam well. That is where people will be talking a lot of nonsense. And that is why they don't respect a lot anywhere they find themselves. But if you do it accordingly, according to what is now expressed of you, modesty, moral, and all the rest, people will continue to respect us and they will continue to support us. They will continue to support anything we say about the hijab or GDP and so on and so forth. And for us to move, to grow nationally and internationally. We have to obey the instructions and regulations of our land. I think it is only when we are able to do it that we will be able to move our country forward. Thank you very much. I hope the guys are in the name. In a shade born in her jeans, we wear him a man by him. Asalaamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa rahmatullahi wa Alhamdulillah for today's lecture, our mentor, our teacher, our senior colleague has said it all my sisters. For those of us who have listened attentively to this lecture, you will agree with me that Professor Akintola has portrayed us. What I meant by us is those of us in the hijab, of course the Muslim woman. He has portrayed us with the picture of a woman as a mother to the nation, a builder of a nation, a decent woman, a just woman, a nation builder, and above all, a highly educated Muslim. And all she that does this for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to seek his pleasure. I think this is a really, really full of thought for us. Because the hijab we put on is just a mere cloth. But it depicts so many things and I, as I have eliminated. So I think it is really a challenge for us to go back home and reflect on this. As a mother, he has seen the hijab to a mother, a real mother, a true mother for the people of your Islam. Are we one? I think this is why we should be asking ourselves. Because it is not just about putting the hijab in you, but it is about seeing to the, you know, according, according to the ticket of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when it comes to rules and responsibilities. He also portrayed us as nation believers. Today, what are we doing? Some of us, as my sister has already mentioned, we only put on the hijab, but our attitude towards for the station, for those of us that are, you know, in the civil service, we have been seeing so many things. Some of them will put on the hijab, but they are actually with their colleagues who are not more angry for them. It's, it's, not, it's, it's not to us. We see women shaking hands with the opposite sex in, the, in, 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 in our places of war simply because we don't want to be uncivilized. And this is why some of us have other names too. We have been had names. Yes, if you refuse because your sister Zainab was in, you know, comfortably, 
you are looked upon as a terrorist, a Boko Haram, a party, extremist, and so on and so forth. So I think it is a big challenge. Let us help ourselves as Muslims. This aspect of inequality and unity that from presentation, I think it's supposed to start right from our house and our different places to be So that we should be seen to be doing the same thing. We are Muslims and the same directive is given to all of us. So we need to go back, look at our attitude towards Islam and our own self and for the sake of Islam. Again, he has talked about the issue of education. It's very paramount. What is happening to our children today? How when it comes about education, we cannot start that out of course without knowledge of Islam. What, how do we look at I'm not looking at those of us again. Look at our population. The next city. Look at the population apart from the girls. How many mothers are there? This is it. I am very for awareness, for you know, remembrance, reminding each other of those good things. How many of us are you? Suppose we are asking for the inspection. I am sure we will multiply this Two of us, my sister. Some of us will be driven now because there is no thing for us. So what are we doing in the issue of education? This is a particular, a very important place where we can learn more. I have learned more from our teacher who has given us, who has brought the process of the job so that we can look at it from each angle and we can see the linkage. It is leading to every aspect of our attitude. So I want to call on us to look at our attitude so that we can be, you know, describe as that word that can last one second. We are one and we are Muslims. We to be identified as Muslims in our attitudes, in our behavior, in our everything we do. Yes, we that we do. Thank you very much. Prop and my sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi I would like to start by praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to place our prop and work in our time for being with us today. And as for what He has related to us, may Allah place the knowledge, and I know that it is much more equal to the task. But uh, I wasn't expecting anything less from Him. May Allah brought me from um, as for our topic of today, the hijab as the metaphor of our national aspiration. As I sat down here without preparing, I just tried to scribble down some few things so that it will help complete my uh, speech as I have only one or two minutes. The topic is really out, and I thank our sisters for thinking proudly of uh, this evening. Now, our prop point is something of the ideas of Nigeria as a nation. It may be mentioned that a nation could be used with fear of attack, love, respect, peace, and tolerance without discrimination, without disrespect to any of the gender, to any, uh, without wickedness, much more without disrespecting cause and property. And that is what the topic is all about. What does the job signify? Let me source. Does the hijab signify only the clothes that we wear on our body? Or it stands for much more than what we wear in our body. Most of the times, I think our discussion on the job, day, year in, year out, is always focused on what we are wearing on our body and a view of the character and the attitude of the Muslim woman. The Muslim women are just half of the Muslim population. And I think the first aspect of the commandment of the job addresses 
but the Muslim women and the men at large. And it's the most important aspect of hijab. We are far from our sisters, those that are lacking that important aspect of hijab, what they are practicing, even though they are wearing the hijab of the body. But the hijab of the soul or the hijab of the mind is absent. The first aspect of hijab is the hijab of what? Of the eyes, which will transcend to the hijab of the soul. We are not asked to lower our gaze. That commandment of lowering of our gaze, when we look at our societies today, we will see that is very, very aspirant in our society today. And the result of that is what we are witnessing today. When we see a lot of men, or a lot of women, even though wearing the hijab or not wearing the hijab, but they are Muslims or they are very promiscuous. And then we see men, they are Muslims, but what they are perpetrating in the society is very alarming today. Just yesterday, as I was in the car coming back from work, I had this story about the man that raped his three year old girl. We have heard the other news that brought down about a year ago during the time of the uh, COVID about a man that raped a girl under a campus. We have heard of several instances of people raping women or children. To the extent that now it is parents that are raping their children. Are we, re are we really observing the job of the soul? So I would like to call our attention that every year we are trying to discuss the issue of the job. We are always currently discussing that of the cover of the body, but let's also try to focus on the job of our moral character. Otherwise, I don't know where our country is moving towards. I don't know when we will reach the habits that we will now begin to uh, come down to face what Allah SWT has asked us to do. It is really affecting us in our societies. It's time to change. Thank you very much. And how can I am sure that the time spent here today is not a waste. We have learned one or two things from our professor and our other students. My contribution today is to remind us and to let everybody know about who should see you when you are not in the jam? It's not everybody that has that permission to see a Muslim woman when she's not wearing a hijab. The, the number of people that can see you when you are not wearing the jam has been mentioned in the Holy Quran, Surah to know, verse 31. And that's why the Lord Allah commanded that let the believing women lower their knees, yes, and cover their body such that the adornment will be concealed. And that is exactly the meaning of the job to conceal, to cover, to make personal, to make unknown, to prevent others from seeing it. And that should not be refilled, except to your fathers, your husband, your son, and your servants that doesn't have the sense of sex. They don't get disturbed when they see you. That is referring to either the aged ones or the young ones when we have them around us. It is sometimes surprising. I feel so much surprised when I see a Muslim woman, especially maybe we are having occasions in schools, ceremonies like marriage, 
which naming ceremony. Majority are here without the job. My heart bleeds that isn't this person going fast with the commandment of my last man or China? Please don't let uh, social ceremonies, occasions, remove the dignity that allows and don't need it. We should always be with our angel. It is expected to cover our head, our ears, our neck, our chest, and our hips. As much as individuals can go, if it can go longer and can be left. But the least should be that that covers up to our hips at least. And again, we should also start on the points at our different places of work, will it be a school, hospital, government establishment, that nobody except those aforementioned has the right to see you when you are not in the job. Let the flag of Islam continue to be flying and the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from you and me. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi what happens when you are paired up with um, professors and um, your senior, your senior student is that by the time they finish talking, it as if there is nothing more to talk about. But be that as it may, I would like to emphasize on three areas. Firstly, I come with the fact that I have attended a program that Professor Akintola is the lecturer. I've read a lot about him. I have some of the published uh, publications that came out of the Dawa activities. And I've always wanted to see him in person. And Allah has made it possible to be. May Allah accept his activities and ours. May he grant our airport success in this work and in the year. He gave a similitude of our national aspirations um, as a metaphorical um, as a metaphor, a metaphor of our hijab. And he mentioned that in as much as it is the government that is ahead in providing what makes a nation work, the citizen, the citizens or the city itself has work to do. And what came to my mind while I was listening to him was what Allah says in the glorious Quran. In the Allah Adai Yubayu Muhammad, only after Yubayu Muhammad is in this game. That Allah does not change the condition of a nation or a people until they change that which is in them. So, first and foremost, like all the discussions have said, we have to look inward. How am I doing my hijab? That's number one. Secondly, when I adorn my hijab, does it interfere with my activities? Most of us here work in one place or the other. Sometimes in the workplace, the one that is putting on the hijab that does not work well. So it is an issue. I work with schools. And sometimes I have to sit and talk with my sisters. Please, the fact that you are running this job means you have to work hard. Because people are looking at you and they expect you to fail. Because they don't want to do that in the first place. Now you are employed to work here, you are running this job, and if you are lazy, the first thing that comes to mind is it is your job that is making you lazy. So you don't give the job a bad name. If you put up the job, work. Like everybody else, and allow to see your work and reward you. Finally, I always tell the non Muslims around me because sometimes if you go for a workshop or seminar and they see you excel, and they'll be wondering, you are wearing the hijab or you are doing well. So I tell them the hijab does not deter the Muslim woman from doing her work. 
That is the message the world hijab may seeks to give to the world. That the hijab is not an obstacle or a challenge in the life of the Muslim woman. She is obeying her God by putting on the hijab. The same way she is also a patriotic citizen. She does whatever her nation expects of her to do, like the other citizens. Therefore, the nation is obliged to allow her right to write, to exercise her religion, to exercise her freedom, to maintain her identity as a Muslim. So the message is too big. My Muslim sisters, I advise myself and yourself that wherever we are, once we are learning the hijab, we should exhibit the best behavioral pattern as Islam has enjoyed on us. Also, we are calling upon whoever is concerned, the stakeholders, like the professor mentioned, when you go for international passport, for your voter's card, for your national ID card, there's that tendency to make you remove the hijab. Alhamdulillah, I've never had that. When I went to do my um, driver's license, I met someone who was not a Muslim, but while others were trying to say I should remove my child, he said, No, I shall just sit down, just remove your glasses. And that was how he captured me. May I like it was more people like that in the society. Even though the constitution enables everybody to practice their religion without hindrance, we must bring it out as Muslims, give that awareness that it is there and we want to take that right of freedom of dressing as Muslim. May Allah make it easy for us here in Nigeria. If Americans can do it, if Britons can, um, can do it, they are wearing their hijab. We say the chorus. Here in Nigeria, we have enough number of Muslim women that should be allowed to adorn the hijab wherever we find ourselves. May Allah make it easy. Subhanallah.